you know, last night was crazy. Um, Baylor played Colorado, and uh, Colorado was able to win. It was a good game all the way through. Um, they definitely got Baylor's best because Baylor is not – they haven't played like that all season. I went and watched them play versus Tarleton. I went and watched them play versus Air Force. They struggled with Air Force, could barely score into like almost a third quarter. Um, and Colorado's defense, I feel like, is way better than Air Force's defense was. I feel like um, they had more skilled players. And so I felt like going into this game, Colorado was going to win by at least 10 points, you know what I'm saying? Just off the strength of how their team is set up, they run out of man, and uh, ended up working out in Baylor's favor. They got, like I said, uh, Colorado, they got their best that night because they don't usually play like that. I watched them play. And um, yeah, man, they ended up making it a great game. Uh, Shadur was able to make a big play. And, uh, you know, like one, two seconds left of the game to uh, uh, LeJonte Wester, then you know, Travis came up and made a big play and, and, and uh, forced the fumble after they uh, Colorado scored an overtime to secure the win. So, um, you know, this this video is just going to be about Travis Hunter and this Heisman Trophy because I feel like this trophy is, is, is his to win. Really, no, his to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, the Heisman has his name written all over it. And we're just going to talk about, like, how he's not even in the Heisman, uh, you know, race, really, because the last time I seen the list, it was just Jalen Milrow, Jason Dart, Carson Beck, and I can't remember who else was on the list, but it wasn't, you know, Travis Hunter was nowhere on there. And, um, you know, I've had the pleasure of going to see Travis Hunter play in person. I went to the opening game uh, last year, the uh, first game in Colorado versus TCU. Uh, me and KD drove to Fort Worth, watched the game. Uh, that was a crazy game, too. Uh, probably one of the best games that I've been to in person, other than uh, the Cowboys versus Eagles game that I went to like a year or two ago. But... I had the pleasure of watching him in person, and then when I watched him in person, like, I I knew just that first game coming out that he was the real deal, because, you know, he went to, he was already number one five-star rated player in his class out of high school, decided to go to, to, go to an HBCU with Coach Prom, so he changed that whole narrative, and you got to know, like, for a player to go and do something like that, you got to have that mindset, because nobody else is going from the top rated ranked player in high school, ESPN won it. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's going to an HBCU because, for one, you're not getting that exposure. Now, I, I know Coach Prime helped out with that exposure for him, but you're not going to an HBCU to, you know, try and shine light. Like, like, you're not trying to go do something that's bigger than you. Your main focus is the lead. So, with NIL, I think that helped a lot, too, because he's like, okay, I'm Travis on there. I'm going to get NILs. I'm going to get the exposure. I just got to go and play, which I know I can do. So not only did he go and dominate at the HBCU level, but then he came over to to, to Power Five, and he was able to show out against a, a TCU team that had just went to the national championship game the year before, and he had a game. He couldn't be great on offense, and he was strapping everything down on defense. Then the pick he had, he caught it on the end zone that we were sitting in. He caught it, and I just saw the play. I'm like, I'm I'm a little bit up. So I'm I'm watching. I can see everything. So I'm watching him the whole time. The man had the IQ to have his eyes in the backfield. He playing his receiver. He seen the running back coming out. So he like, okay, I know they finna go to this because we we manned up. So he know what they in on defense. He said we manned up. Ain't nobody gonna be able to get over to the running back in time. So I'm gonna leave him. And he dove out and made that pick. I was like, yeah, he different. Then he just kept making big play after big play. So now we fast forward to this this season, and Colorado is a different team with him on the field. Granted, they got all these like top receivers on their offense. If he's not getting the ball, they struggle. Because for one, they O line is treacherous. So it's gonna be hard for Shador to have any time to do anything. But when you got Travis in the game and he starts getting, that's another thing I like about him too is that he's humble, but he got a good balance of humbleness and in in that dog. Like that D on his chest, like that that patch. Deion Sanders rightfully so made that badge, not just for him, but but just for for players in general like him who are who have that dog in them. Because it's only a select few. And if you played football before, you know who got that dog in them, and then who are just good players. Travis got that dog in him, not because he can play offense and defense, but because of the mindset and the mentality, the work ethic, the way he approached the game, the way he played the game. You know what I'm saying? It's just like he's that dog, and I don't understand how he's not in the contention for Heisman at all. Like, after that game last night, he should definitely be in contention. 
He was getting double teamed the whole night. He wasn't getting targeted like that. He started to show frustration. The very next offensive drive they came out, he got targeted twice and made big plays. And from there on out, they targeted him no matter what, got him the ball in his hands, got the offense going, made a difference. And the Heisman Trophy, people forget, like, it's not team-based. It's not based on how good your team is. Like, that shouldn't be a factor. It should be a factor to a certain extent. Right now, Colorado is 3-1. and one. Granted, they're not ranked. They have the best player in college football on their team. He's had 100 yards receiving, and I think every game. He got five touchdowns on the season. In four games. With an interception. He don't even come off the field. Last game, he came off the field for like a play or two. In this game, he came off the field for like a couple plays. So I guess they starting to try to limit his, his playing time now, I guess. Uh, just give him a little bit of break even though he don't need it. But when have you ever seen a player play on offense and defense and never come out of the game? I'm waiting on you. Let me know. I'm waiting. Never, right? We ain't never seen no shit like this before. And I feel like the only reason why he's not in contention for the award because he had Colorado and Deion Sanders as his head coach. It's crazy how the world set up. Like, like I hate doing the whole race thing, but I feel like it's definitely... Pre uh, relevant in this situation like anytime like people like a Deion Sanders or just black people in general are winning they always try to find something to nitpick at nobody is never con content with what's right in their face Travis Hunter ain't did nothing but be a, he's he's on the Dean's list I think he's a 4.0 student he's humble he didn't live right the, he liked the I always said I was he's like the LeBron of football right now the girl he been with since high school he didn't brought her with her to college they live together he didn't engage, got got engaged to her. You know what I'm saying? He's doing everything the right way. A good role model for the kids. Like, how can you hate on somebody like that? And he don't really get hate, but, like, he, re he definitely getting blackballed by not being in, at least in the conversation for the Heisman. On the official list. Like, the Heisman race, he's not even on the top five. Now, I don't know what it's looking like after last night. Hopefully, he should be up there because every time you watch Colorado play, you're watching because of Travis Hunter. You're watching because of Shadir Sanders. You're watching because you want to see what they're going to do because they got the players to do it. And I think the fact that their O-line is so bad makes it even more interesting to watch because it's a little harder for him to go out and make the plays that he needs to make, but it just goes to show you the resilientness. And they never throw anybody under the bus. I've never seen Travis talk bad about the O-line on the media, even though they probably should or could, and it'd be justifiable. Never seen Shadir get out of got get out of character and do it he he should be the main one but you know what i'm saying it's just crazy man like like Dion being their coach why can you hate on Dion? people don't like people hate people that are confident Dion is not cocky he's confident but the thing about Dion is that he's a man of god he's a great leader he's an icon to many this generation and past generation of his time hall of famer like he got so many accomplishments and He's a, a, a man that changed, was able to change the way that he was as a person. Not only is he still flashy and confident and, and things like that, but he don't even cuss anymore. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he is the best coach that I've seen just because he covers everything. So I'm able to see real life what it is like for him to be a coach. Like if I was still playing football, I definitely would go play for Dion because he's going to keep it real with you. He's going to make sure he take care of you. He's going to make sure he's teaching you stuff not only about just football, but in life. And getting you ready for the real world because let's be honest, everybody ain't going to the NFL. But he always preparing them for real life situations. So you gotta respect somebody like that. But everybody hate him for no reason. And you read comments, they be like, Well, I don't think it's really that. I think it's just that people like don't like the way they celebrate. Why would you not celebrate if you win a game? If people in the comments hating talking about they they celebrating because they beat Baylor. Who is Baylor? They unrate Baylor this, Baylor that. Yeah, Baylor not that good, but at the same time, they get everybody best. They everybody Super Bowl, and they're not even a number one ranked team. It's like they want Colorado to go out there and beat Alabama for them to be justifiable as a good team. Or you know what I'm saying? Like, if you go and watch them, if you really know football and you really watch football for real, they are a pretty solid team. Their defense got better from last year. They O line just trash. They got the skilled players on offense. Shadur never have time to do nothing, but he somehow always find a way to be in games just like last night and win the game. 
And I guarantee you that game versus Nebraska, if he would have had time to throw the ball, he would have outplayed that Dylan Raiola, Patrick Mahomes look replica ass nigga. So, um, yeah, man. I don't know. Travis Travis should win the award. I feel like he definitely getting blackballed. Uh, it's sad to see that. You know what I'm saying? We live in a, a hating ass generation right now. Like it's cool to hate. Like whether it be him or just just in general with anything and everything and everybody. Like it's it's just cool for for most people to troll and hate. I hate that shit, bro. I hate that shit for real. But he he definitely the, the clear player to win. Like who else is gonna win? Jalen Milrow, how? And this is no disrespect towards him, but how the fuck is he? How? It ain't like he out here looking like Lamar Jackson at Louisville. The game he scored five touchdowns in, what was that, last week? Versus who was that? Wisconsin? Or who was that? I don't even remember. Simple read options. They not accounting for, bro. He just outrun them to the end zone. Five-star receiver, you can just chunk the ball down 50 yards to him and he going to make a play. Or even if even if it ain't a bomb down the field, you get the ball to him, he's making two and three people miss and he's scoring. If you at Bama, you have all the pieces around you. So if he ain't looking like a Lamar Jackson, uh, a, a Johnny Manziel, we shouldn't be talking about him to win Heisman. No disrespect towards him. But that's only because Travis Hunter is here. The dark dude from Ole Miss, again, no disrespect to any of these other players. But what has he done, realistically? We talking about stats and numbers. Forget all that. We talking about the best player. When you go back and look at all the other Heisman winners, RG3, what did he look like when he won? Lamar Jackson, what did he look like when he won? Cam Newton, what did he look like when he won? Johnny Manziel, what did he look like when he won? Exciting players to watch, some that we hadn't seen before. You feel what I'm saying? Like, come on now. <laughs> like, this is Travis Hunter we talking about. You know what I'm saying? And y'all just gotta be real with y'all still. Stop hating. Get that hate out y'all heart, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all might not like the way they do stuff. They change in the way it is. They just being real. And a lot of people can relate to them. I feel like that's the main reason why they get all the hate. Because people that look like me can relate to Colorado and they putting it on the national stage and they not afraid to just be naturally who they are. They're not being immediately, uh, grammarly correct for the media. Even though they come in and present themselves in a, in a professional manner, they still giving their little swag and stuff like that. Man, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Just be real. Everybody, everybody be trying to dress it up for the media and all this other stuff. I think they just be genuinely who they are. And they're good people. And people don't like that. People want you to be a certain way they want you to be. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Am I tweaking? Is Travis Hunter not the Heisman winner? You see how much of a difference he made when he on the field. When they played Colorado State last year and, and bro got hurt. It looked way different. Every game they didn't been in, they didn't had a chance. Especially with their defense being a little better. He don't even get to get no, like nobody don't even throw the ball his way. He getting double teamed on offense. Like just the amount of respect that they have for him when, when he, the opponent, when they playing him, should just let you know who the winner of the Heisman should be. And we only, what, four or five weeks into the season. I don't care if they don't make the college football playoff or not. That's the Heisman. And if anybody other than him win it this year, it don't count. Yes, I said it. It don't count. It's going to be like when y'all talk about how LeBron, that bubble championship he won with the Lakers, how it don't count. It was a, a fluke win. That's how it's going to be for this year. So be ready for that because I will make a video on it. And I don't give a fuck. I sure don't. So, uh, yeah, man, that's going to be it for this video, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, y'all let me know who y'all think should win the Heisman. There's only one right answer. Yeah. So, uh, appreciate y'all for watching, man. It's been your boy. I'm gone. Mm -hmm.